Okay, so we're ready to start on the journal side. So we are going to make two signatures. Now, a signature is just a group of papers folded together and usually stitched together or stapled. Um, and that's what a signature is. We're, we're going to make two of them. The first one is going to be using this paper from Chiobella, the Dear Santa paper. Now, <clears throat> our journal is going to be eight inches tall, about six and a quarter or so inches wide. So we do not have to trim any of the paper for the height, but we do have to trim some of the width. And we're going to be arranging our papers so they look kind of like a little booklet. So I've already cut mine kind of the way I want them to see how it looks. So we're going to start with the first signature. So when we open this, uh, I've already put them together. I'll just show you how it's going to look. You're going, it's going to open like this with this paper up front. Then you're going to open it. You'll have this red side and then this fireplace over here. Then you're going to have the back side of the fireplace, which is this page. And then you're going to have this paper, the North Pole Letters for Santa. And then you're going to have this page, which is just the letters and the wood grain. And it's in this center page that we are actually going to be um, putting a, an envelope right in the center. So this is going to be the, the middle of our signature right here. So we're going to have an envelope popped in here. And then you're going to turn this page and we're going to have this scene, which is, I thought was real pretty. Um, this is the flakes of snow and then this mountain scenery. I thought of putting a little vellum pocket in here also. That would look pretty with this paper. Then we have the music notes here. Santa and his reindeer over here. And then it's going to end with this. Isn't that just, I just think it's so beautiful. But we have to cut this paper. So I've already cut mine. So I'm gonna show you basically how I cut mine one by one so you can look at it and see where your cut lines are. So for this first page, usually you're gonna have one side. It doesn't matter where you cut it on this side. There is no pattern, so you don't have to be mindful of this side. But this side, you have to cut it down. So you can see where I cut mine down at the tip of this, this green little ledge right here. And then it goes to this green ledge with a little bit of yellow. Chances are we're going to have to trim a little bit off of here once we get them all folded and put together. So that's going to be this page. The next page is going to be this page with the fireplace. Now this one was a little tricky and maybe I should have not, I should have cut it a little bit more in here and then have more of the stocking showing, but it is what it is. You can kind of measure where you want your six and a half inches. I just put, you can see where I cut it. I think I cut it a little too close here. It probably won't matter much. Um, and maybe I could have taken off some from here. So if I had to do it again, I would take off this piece, the green right here, and then figured out how much I needed to take off here. But you can kind of see the way I cut it. Should have left a little bit more on this edge and taken a little bit off of this. But there's only one sheet, so I can't redo it. So that was that one. The back side again, you don't have, it doesn't matter because it's, it's, a, it's a pattern. On this one, um, 
I basically cut this side. I left the mailbox intact like this. So this will give us our six and a half inches here. So that's where I cut it. Doesn't matter over on this side because it's just uh, the letters. And then we're, we're going to be doing the other papers, which we're going to be starting with this one. Let's start with this guy. So he, here is the mountain scenery. So I wanted to keep this bow intact. So this is one edge of the paper, and there was a Christmas tree here, and I just measured six and a half inches, and that was cut off like that. So keep the bow intact. You're going to cut off the Christmas tree. So that was that page. We already did that one. Next we come to the sleigh. Same thing here. If I had to do it over again, I wanted to keep the Merry Christmas. I cut it a little too far in. If you do yours, go ahead and cut it so it's a, you have a little bit more showing on this end where it says Merry Christmas and you don't cut into the globe as much. I should have cut, I should have trimmed off a little bit on here. And if I had to do it again, I would cut a little bit more on through here and then measured my six and a half inches. But you guys get the idea. Backside doesn't matter, it's the notes. We already did this one. And then the last one, which is kind of tricky, is going to be this paper. I want it to, if you look on the back side, what I did is I wanted to keep Santa in this moon intact. So I just cut it, you can see where I cut it right there. And that's going to cut into Santa's sleigh right here a little bit. And then I measured six and a half inches and you still have all the reindeer intact. You're cutting off a little bit of their feet here, but you still have all the reindeer intact. So that's that page. Then once we get all those cut, let's see if I can get this back together the way I had it. Because then you're going to piece these pieces together to make your little booklet. So let's see. So we got this one, this one, this one, this one. Is that right? This one, this one, this one. Nope. I got out of sync. So how does this go? This must go like this. So let's see, did I get it right? So Christmas here. Then we got this one. This is our center of our signature. We got this scene. We're going to put a vellum pocket in here to break this up a little bit. We have Santa and his reindeer, and then the moon. So this is important um, that you get them cut, and then the way you're going to adhere them together to get this booklet, you will be putting this sheet, this page, together with this page. So this is, they're going to be, we're going to seam them together right down here. So it's going to be like that. Then you're going to get this Christmas paper, this Christmas with the fireplace and the gingham, and you're go we're going to seam it together with this sleigh, with this flakes of snow paper. And then you're getting the letters with the wood grain, and you're, we're going to seam those together. 
So now we have our little booklet and we're gonna add some little inserts in between some of these pages. So that's how it's gonna look. So we're going to start putting these together. So how do we put them together? You can't, you, 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 we're gonna make just like little hinges for all of these to put them together. So once you have your paper cut, and I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges. Don't really have to do it right now. Um, you want to put some repositional tape so you have them together in the, the way they should be. So we're going to start with the centerpiece. Now for the hinge, what you're going to do is you're going to get a three quarter inch cutoff from this paper, the wood grain paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to adhere this paper to this paper with this. Now, this is important because I've already messed up once. You, when you're attaching this, obviously you are going to, what we have to do is flip this over in this direction. Keep that repositionable tape there so you know where you're going. It's going to be like this. And what you're going to do is you are going to be attaching this end into this hinge and this end into this hinge. You need to leave a little gap like you always do. If you have a score mark, you need to leave like a, a, a sixteenth of an inch at least gap in between. And then you're going to adhere it down like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. I'm going to put a thin strip. I don't know if I should use glue. I, I'm so scared of glue. Because if I screw up, I can't fix it. I might put my, my really skinny tape right here. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to put my skinny tape there and then adhere this in. I'll do one side and come back and once I get my tape on, show you. But make sure you know which, where you're attaching your papers. You've got your little edge right in here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and ink my borders before I attach the papers to this hinge. So I went ahead and put my eighth of an inch score tape along the edges and I inked this center part where it was <clears throat> scored down the middle. Number one, it lets me see where the score line is so I can stay away from it and then it will help um, mask because you're going to see a little bit of it peeking through here. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to align this here, keeping a, a, like a millimeter or so away from this little score mark that's been inked, and I'm going to pull my tape. And then the same thing on this side. To help me keep everything straight, I'm going to be using my scoreboard just to butt it against the upper corner and this corner so I can keep my line straight. I don't want my papers drifting too much off. So I get it pulled there and then I can just go in and pull my score tape and then do the other side. Oh, it goes this way. Do the other side like this. So if you have a scoreboard, it helps you keep everything straight. So pulling the score tape. And there we have our little hinge. Let's 
So one page down, so put that aside. Let's see, where can I put this? Put it here. And now we're going to be putting this one in. So where are my pieces? Let's see, is this three quarters of an inch? Yeah, this is almost three quarters of an inch, so I'm going to be doing the same thing with this one. Um, that's going to be adhering these two together. I don't think, yeah, this one would be too hard to do. So we're going to be picking this side because this little seam will kind of match with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one prepared. I'm going to score it down the middle and ink the edges of this little piece, our little binding piece, our hinge piece. So I have these two pieces. This We're going to bind them right here um, with this strip. I went ahead and folded it in half and inked the inside mark here so it's it's easier to see, if you can see that. Remember, this is going to be going this way. Let me fold it like this. So it's going to be going this way. So you're going to get your two pieces of designer paper. You're gonna flip them over and you're going to remove that repositional tape don't need that anymore. You know where they're going, right? So this one's going here. And then this one will be going here. So same thing. I'm going to put my 1 8 inch score tape down my hinge. And then I'll be laying this down and I will be back. Okay, got this one in. I'm gonna pull this tape. So now we have this page done. So we have one more page to do. And it's this one. Well, what I'm going to do is use this, this piece and instead of putting it on this side, put it on this side. So it'll be like this. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, this isn't quite three quarters of an inch. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's almost still just going to score it down the center and then put it down here. Okay, so I have this last piece um, prepped, inked, and I inked the center again. And I put my little score tape on the sides. This is going to be going like this. So I'm going to be flipping this over. So I make sure I know what I'm doing. That's always important. Where did it go? Where did it go? There it is. I'm going to remove my repositional tape. Kept everything together. I should have inked the edges here, huh? Maybe I'll do that on this last one. Should have done it on the others, but okay. Um, can get the other ones later, but just ink this, especially with this dark blue. 
So I'm going to put that down right there. So that, that hinge is in. So now we're going to put our book back together and refold all those square marks. So this sheet goes in the back, then we have this one, then we have this one. So if you need to re fold all those that. that That, 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 and there's our little booklet. Not too bad, huh? Now, since whatever's going to be in the middle, remember it's going to be bulking out, so at the end, we're going to be trimming this down to make it nice and flush. So that's why we have a little bit extra that we can cut down and that won't be a problem with any of these pages here. Okay, um, now let's get some stuff to put inside our little pamphlet. Okay, so we are going to be adhering a, an envelope in here. Now, when you pick an envelope, make sure it's a good quality, sturdy envelope. I, we have lots of papyrus stuff. I love papyrus, so I have lots of papyrus. So I was going through my envelopes. Here's a thick, thick red one. That would probably be real pretty right there. That is very, that is very pretty. And this is so thick. Here's another one, not quite as thick as papyrus and it's silver. And I thought that is, that is real pretty too. Here's another envelope from another card company. It's thick. And that's, that's actually pretty too. But when you're picking a card, remember, we're going to be sewing these, these papers together. And this one, because usually I put um, a hole in the middle and then three quarters of an inch to an inch down. And you don't want this to get lost. Let's see if that would even be... I even have a ruler. What is this? If it was right here. That is like an inch, and that is about the max maximum I go up um, when I'm sewing them. So that would, and then you're going to cut off the edges here. So this size would not work. Here's a nice sturdy gold one. Don't like the gold. Maybe for the other signature, that would look well. So pick up a, a, an envelope. The size of the these are seven and one eighth by five and one sixteenth. I think they're both about the same. Seven and one eighth. Five, um, this one's five 
and a quarter. Did I? This one's a little bit wider. So that's um, what I'm going to decide next. Do I want this or do I want that? That just looks so pretty. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to do this. So here's uh, what you're going to do. So once you decide on your card, what you're going to do is seal the envelope. So you're going to seal the envelope. And then what you're going to do is, if you're going to be putting it like this, you are going to be cutting this off, this off, and this off. Let me show you. So you just take it to your paper trimmer, trim this edge, this edge, this edge, and then it will open up like this. So when we sew in our pages together, we're going to be sewing in through here, and this is going to be the middle of our signature. So once we, we tie it off, and we're going to be tying it off right in here, then you would seal back up this, this um, envelope, just glue it on the side here and here, and you're going to be left with a tuck spot here. So that's what I'm going to do, and oops, my computer just went off, and you can also put it in the envelope punch to make a little um, um, edge here, so you can pull whatever's in here out. So you would just put this part in your envelope punch, or you can do a circle punch here. Just make sure you do not um, do it once these are glued together. So that would give you a little indication that there's something here that you can um, pull up from, or you can just leave it straight. It doesn't matter. So pick your envelope, figure out um, if you're going to be doing this or not. And you're just basically going to leave this open till we sew, sew our signatures in anyway. I'm probably, depending on how thick this is, once I open it up, you may want to reinforce this edge here before you punch it. This is a real flimsy card. So it would definitely need to be reinforced here. Not sure if this one will need to be reinforced. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it and cut this card. Okay, so when I opened up my envelope, cut off the sides real thin here and here, the liner sheet on this side came undone. And this is the side that I'm going to be using my envelope punch to make that little cutout. So I thought, well, I'm going to borrow this. I'm going to put it over here and probably fold it over one time to reinforce this edge here, since this is where we're going to be punching. So probably score it like a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, fold it over and put it down here. And then now I have this piece of paper that I want to put um, some designer paper on because when you have this punched out, you're going to be seeing what's ever here. So I was thinking maybe the green, not sure. And this is from the Graphic 45 paper. So we got plenty of that left. I could put that over here so we would be seeing green. But first, what I'm going to do is tear this down, fold it over, punch it, and then see what looks best to put on this side. So I folded the edge over, burnished it, got my tape here. So I'm going to adhere this down. Oop, I probably need tape there too, don't I? Yes, I do. Oh, yep, I need to put tape here. Yes, I do. Okay, uh, and then I'll put it down. 
So I got that adhered down. Um, this measures seven inch is seven inches across. I'm gonna put it in my envelope punch at half inches and punch and flip it around two and a half inches. And then I'm going to take it and go ahead and trim this out and be right back. So I went through my scraps of the Graphic 45 paper and I like this one. It picks up some of the red over here. It's got green. It's got some snowflakes. That's good. Here was my original idea, which was the green snowflakes. That looks good too, but it doesn't have the red. And then this stripe paper. I thought that looked, that looks really good too. I like that. Um, so many choices. So you can pick the one that you like uh, whatever you like. I'm, I'm kind of liking that. But I also like this. I think I'm going to go with the stripes just because I think the stripes just kind of goes with the the pattern that's over here. Any paper is going to look beautiful. It's graphic 45. They always look beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and get this and put that in. So the envelope is done. So I added some black construction tape here. So whatever we put in here, slide in here, doesn't bump against the lip of this. Um, designer paper, I added some washi tape. You're never going to see this. So when we punch our holes, this paper is reinforced. It's not quite as thick as this cardstock. And then, like I said, we are not going to be closing these this up until we sew it in. So we have this um, envelope in. Probably going to do some decorations on it. But for now, we're done with this envelope. So we got this, this page is going to have an envelope. If we lift this up, we come to this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I have, well, I'm going to, I have this little, I think they're called glycine bags. Um, got, just got them at Michael's, their bakers use them. Um, I could have got it, I should have got the bigger ones, but. This is what I have, and these get sewn in also. So these are going to be folded and sewn in. Um, when we do our pamphlet stitch, this one's going to go all the way to the bottom so we catch it with, um, not all the way to the bottom, we catch it with this, this um, thread and one here. Probably not gonna be able to catch it with this one, might, we might, because it is kind of tall. So I'm going to temporarily just kind of put that here. So I know that's where it's going to go when we sew it in. So what that will look like, you'll have that bag in between these two pieces of paper. This this is just going to... to to fold um, like a little flap here. So here is what our first signature is going to look like. So I'm going to have to see how big it is once I sew it. So we have our cover. Open it up. I have this, this paper. I'll put the link for it down below. I got it from Amazon. It's just... Um, 
my coffee stained, but it's not coffee stained. It's this vintage paper and this page. And then this, here's the glassine um, pocket. This is, we're gonna use this as a flap. And I have this that I made, it's a template. It'll be free for you guys. Um, you can just get it from Scrap and Create. And you're just going to glue this on this flap so you have a nice place for journaling or writing your letter since this is going to Letters for Santa. We're going to have this area for writing on both sides. So you have writing there and there. And then we have this envelope. I'm going to be able to stick something in here. Here's our glycine bag. I'm going to put something in here. Here's the back part of that paper. And I think that looks good with Santa here. And then it closes. So we're going to get everything tidied up in there where I want it. And then we're going to go ahead and sew it. And after we sew it, then we can do some trimming. So I have my little pamphlet organized in the way I want it. So that page, this, 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 and we have this little flap that we're going to be adding a journaling page to. This, oops, I had this down. Our envelope. This page, I decided to go ahead and put this almost all the way towards the bottom because our hole is going to hit right above it and then here and then down here. So that's there. Then we have that, that, and that. So once you get them all um, the way you want them organized, Then you just get your booklet, open it to the center. I didn't do a very good job there getting it. And then you're just going to use some paper clips to get your book to hold it together the way you want it. So let me open this back up. That way when you're sewing, doesn't move on you. So what you're going to do is you are going to get a template. A template is just where you're going to be putting the holes. So this is one inch wide by eight inches tall. And this is where we're going to be putting our holes in our little booklet. So that's how you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this one too. If you guys already know how to do this, Excuse me for struggling. I'm so slow. Okay, now some people will just go ahead and use their pokey tool and go in like this. I like to get a book and use it as a cradle. Let me get my, my book. So I just opened up um, my calculus, old calculus book. Open it up and we're going to put this in there so the spine of the pamphlet goes into this crevice and now it's all lined up here i'm going to take these off so then you get your pokey tool and you should be able to go straight through
and proof is always in the pudding and it looks like the pudding's pretty good. So now we have our three holes punched. I don't know if you can see them. One, two, three. So now we're going to sew. So then I use the Linco binders needles, but you can use an embroidery needle and any needle that has a big enough um, hole up here is, is probably going to be fine. But that's what I use. And then I have this spool of old waxed thread. I got it at the thrift store. <laughs> I have no idea what size it is, um, but, it, but it, it's waxed, which makes it easier to work with. It doesn't get caught as much as other thread. But you can use embroidery thread, three strands of embroidery thread, upholstery thread. Those all work. It just has to be a strong thread. Oh, I didn't tell you how much to get. Like three times the length. One, two, three. I am not really good at this and I am slow. There are videos on how to do a three hole pamphlet stitch that are probably much better than what I am going to show you, but I will try. So we are going to go through our middle hole and come out on this side. So going through that middle hole, coming out through this side. And there's this piece of thread, which I have to put a piece of, I'm going to put some washi tape over it because, because just because I always tend to pull it through. So I'm just going to put some washi tape so it doesn't move. So then once you go through that middle hole, you're going to go either up or down, it doesn't matter, to the next hole. Of course, I have to put this right next to my eyes because I can't see. Up to the next hole, come back into the center, then go up. Do not go in this hole again. Go past the middle hole, go back up to the top hole, or which this, whichever hole on the opposite side. And then you're going to go back through that middle hole. Then you're going to go through this middle hole, but make sure you do not catch the thread of the, the first piece of thread that you went through. And you're going to come out back through them on the center, on the inside. And then you're just going to pull to get your strings tight. sure it's tight out here. Nope, it's not. So on your two strings, they should be opposite, on the opposite sides of this center string. We just got loose again. I want that a little bit tighter. So once you have it tight, taunt, uh, and that's why I use the washi tape here. It keeps it from tearing. Um, once you have it taunt, you're going to do a square knot. Oops, I could take this needle out. Put my needle away.
and since it's wax thread, it sticks to itself. There, so then you can trim your, oops, not the scissors, trim your ends. Let's see if I, how I did. And the other thing on this side, if you make the holes going from in to out, it's going to leave these little ridges. So I know some people make their holes when they're making their holes from out to in, so you don't have these little ridges here. Um, that's something I should probably, I'm, on the next one, I'm gonna try it that way. I just don't know how to do it if I'm using the cradle. I have to do it differently. So everything is in. It looks good. We only have a little bit of trimming to do right here, but not much. So that actually looks really good. So let's see. Got our pages in. They're not too crooked. Not too crooked. And I got a little off there, but not too, not too bad. So we're not going to be sewing it into the the uh, little album. We're actually going to be using um, elastic cords to slip it under. So the good thing about this is when you have this envelope. Now you can just close the ends and you don't see the string on the inside. So that's that's good. That looks that looks so pretty. Don't you think that's just so pretty? So pretty. So if you bring out our album, here's our regular old mini album here. And then here is the dosi do part, the where the journal is going to be going. This is going to be, we're going to be adding some elastic cords here, and then this is going to slip under. So this is going to go here, and then we'll have the other one behind it. And these will be removable, so we will need to do some trimming here on the edge, but we're not going to do that until we get the elastic cord in and we make our, our other signature. We're going to round the corners on each of these pages after we do some trimming, and then we're going to ink all the edges. And I just think that is so darn pretty. We still have to decorate the inside of it, add some stuff, but isn't that just so pretty? Oh my god, well, I just love this paper. Just love this paper. So beautiful. Okay, so let's get started on our second signature. So this is one signature, and we're gonna build it exactly like we did this one. 